Well, today's episode is going to be in fun and exciting. As you know, New Japan Pro Wrestling has begun the road to Tokyo Dome. This is day one. As you can see, we're getting closer and closer to January 4th for Wrestle Kingdom. So we got some amazing matches taking place. Previews before we get there. And of course, we got MLW Fusion 160. Alex King once again is added again with the whole Opera Cup. We got, of course, Mance Warner taking on Mads Kruger and the Women's Featherweight Championship will be on the line. We also got ended with Impact Wrestling. As you know, we're getting closer and closer to Hard to Kill. So a lot of things will be taking place. And of course, the uh, main event features Jordan Grace teaming up with Mickey James to deal with Sa uh, Tasha Steeles and Savannah Evans. And then finally, we got some more news updates what's been going on in the world of pro wrestling regarding Adam Cole, Thunder Rosa, and a few other things we definitely will be talking about. So, let's get ready for another episode of the Leaded Wrestle Zone. Welcome everybody to the Leaded Wrestle Zone, all things that is pro wrestling with AEW, NXT, New Japan Pro Wrestling, Impact Wrestling, the National Wrestling Alliance, various promotions, wrestlers, matches, and championships. I am your host, Jay Rod here. So let's begin with New Japan Pro Wrestling. As I said before, we have begun the road to Tokyo Dome. This is day one, and this event takes place in Cork and Hall. Now, our first four match are involving all four members of the United Empire taking on the Young Lions. Our first match is Kosa Fujita taking on the Fireball Francesco Kira. It was a pretty good match, but however, the Firewall by Francesco Kira sealed the deal for him to defeat Fujita. Uh, <coughs> then the next one, I have to say, this one's a very exciting one. Um, we have the Young Lion, you you go. Yuto um, Nakashima taking on United Empire's Aaron Hinari. I thought this was a pretty good match because it showed the strength of Nakashima that he's not afraid to throw down. But of course, I'm sure that would impress Hinari, but Hinari is not interested. He feels that it's his time now to shine because he felt that everything has been held back. But we'll see what happens then for him. Next match we have. Rohe Oiwa taking on the Great Okan. As you know, recently, if you guys heard, Great Okan is the brand new <coughs> Ref Pro Undisputed British Heavyweight Champion, defeating Zack Knight after replacing his nephew, Ricky um, Knight Jr. But we'll, so we'll, now, as you know, that title is back where it's supposed to be at with the United Empire, which is something I'm sure Will Ospreay is happy about. But once again, <coughs> The Great Okan has shown his superiority by applying a triangle um, a silencer move that he that he uh, pulled off, giving him the win. And then finally, we have Tomo Akiham not taking on Jeff Cobb. I have to say, <coughs> Hamna, as tough as he comes, he was still no match for, of course, the Jeff Cobb after he applied the Tour of the Islands, giving him the match. Now, interesting news has developed. As you know, we have the KOPW trophy that currently is being held by Shingo Takagi. But however, <coughs> starting 2023, instead of having a trophy, there will be a championship belt. So there will be the next Rando show, Rando in Wrestle Kingdom to crown a brand new KOP champion. So basically, the trophy will be a thing of the past, and now we're going to have a brand new title now keep in mind we will have a brand new t another brand new title that very same day which is the um iwgp women's uh iwgp world television title so we will crown two new champions 
Now, our next match, we have Shota Umino teaming with Satoshi Kojima and Togi Makame. Now, this was a weird uh, dynamic between Kashi, um, Kojima and Makabe. Back in the day, they never got along because they were from two different factions. If you guys remember, <coughs> for, uh, Kojima was part of Kojima Goon before it became Suzuki Goon. And Kojima was part of the Great Heel Bash. So that kind of sets the whole thing. But however, their opponents, it's none other than Tranquilo, L.I.J., Sonata, Shingo Tagaki, and Tsutsu Naito. But in this particular case, it was Shingo. <coughs> Who won the match by applying Made in Japan onto uh, Makabe, giving them the win. Now, more exciting news coming from New Japan. It just revealed that Tai Chi be reunited with an old friend, former member of Suzuki Goon. We're talking about Ishka. If you guys remember that big monster who left behind the Iron um, Claw, well, looks like he's returning, and those tour dates will take place on the 20th. 5th of March and the 26th. So this is going to be interesting. Now our next match. We have. Yado and Ren Narita. Taking on Dangerous Techers. Zack Sabre Jr. and Tai Chi. This is going to be the last time. I believe we're going to see those two team up. Since as you know. Suzuki Goon will be calling it quits. By the end of this year. I thought the match was pretty well. But however it was. Um. A tai Chi with a big forearm hit onto Yato that gave him the win. Next match, we have a four-way tag match. All competitors involved in the IWGP Junior Heavyweight uh, Championship. Team number one, six or nine, Taguchi and Wato. As you know, Wato is involved in that four-way match. Then we got Suzuki Goons, Kanemaru and Desperado. Well, Desperado is involved in that. Then, of course, there's L.I.J.'s Bushi and Hiramu. And then, finally, Bullet Club's Ghetto and Taiji Shimori. Now, Ishimori is the current champion, so basically, <coughs> this is a preview before that. But it took the Pinchi Loco by Despi or Desperado onto Ghetto. One, two, three, it was over. I thought the match was great, but it does send a clear message. Thus, Desperado has the momentum right now to win the four-way match at Wrestle Kingdom on January 4th. We just got to wait and see until that day happens. Now, our main event, we have members of Chaos, Yo and Kaguchika Okada teaming up with the ace, Hiroshi Tanahashi, to take on the other members of Suzuki Goon, Doiki, Lance Archer, and Minoru Suzuki. I thought this match was great because some history between both Tanahashi and Suzuki Goon goes back a few years back, but this time it was in fact Yo with the direct drive onto Doki that allowed them to win the match. So, but however, right now Yo is picking up the momentum, knowing that he is walking in as the challengers for the IWGP Junior Heavyweight Tag Team Titles against United Empire's Catch 2 2, TJP, and Francisco Carroll. So, we'll see what happens then. So I think that's pretty much it. What we have for New Japan, I believe it's time for MLW Fusion. Okay, MLW Fusion 160. It opened up with the tables match between Mads Kruger and Mance Warner. Now, this was called out after Battle Riot <coughs> for where Mads Kruger went um, toe-to-toe -to -toe with Kruger and started causing a bit of a stir with him. However, um, Mads Kruger was able to make Mance Warner bleed, which is something he wanted. But you know the Southern Psycho, nothing will stop him until he wins because he wants to celebrate having his beer. But he did put him through a table and all that, so it's kind of exciting that he wins his match. But where do we go from here? I don't know. Will Mads Kruger will get his retribution against the Southern Psycho? We will find out in the, next com oh, in the upcoming weeks. Now, we do see Microman hanging out with his manager out in the street. Doing some holiday cheers, but the play the property manager was not happy to see them doing that. But uh, they decided to leave. 
Now, Juicy, for now, as you know, he's excited because right now many people have talked about, okay, they could be the next challengers for the MLW World Tag Team titles. But right now he went to find Lance and Batu due to the fact they want it. He wants to go to the buffet. So <laughs> I thought it was great. Now, Teo Valkyrie has sent a strong message to Lady Flamer, as you know. Everybody in the Luchadoras have hated to, uh, Teo Valkyrie, who's been the most dominant foreigner in Mexico. So basically now they want to take it up a notch with her. So that's going to be fun. So that will be our main event. Then we have Alex Cross. <coughs> now, Alex Cross, he's out of his freaking mind. He claims that Davy Richards... Has been ducking him. No, Davy has not been ducking him. He's been running from him. Not to mention, he thinks that the Opera Cup is belongs to him, and wh whoever holds the Opera Cup controls MLW. This guy is delusional. But I have a feeling that we may see the 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 uh, Davy Boy Smith Jr. and the Billington Bulldogs may come back to reclaim what is rightfully theirs, and that is the Opera Cup. So we'll see what happens then. That's my prediction. Now, however, speaking of Alex Kane, he did this prize fighting match and he had um, D3 the, in it. But the match ended in favor of of Alex Kane. But however, Davey Riches, who still has some issues towards, of course, Bumaye Fight Club. The numbers was too much, all of that. So Davey Riches will get his day against Alex Kane soon enough. Now, Sean Skywalker, as you know, he is the current new MLW middleweight champion. He's calling out for every challenger that comes in, so he's not afraid of it. So that's going to be fun to watch. EJ and Duke, as you know, has been claiming that he is unstoppable at the moment. Because right now, he believes that since he did not walk out, he walked out with no scratches after last week. That's what makes him better. So... But Alan Hammerstone, he had a different opinion. He feels that, you know, he thinks that he's a better star than him and all that stuff. But we will see until the day comes when they have their match. Now, members of the Samoan SWAT team, <coughs> Jump Fatu and uh, Lance were hanging out with Microman. But Linson Dorado had a, birth a Christmas gift for Microman. I thought it was funny. It was great. So it looks like they're going to team up for some odd reason. Like, be a, a very interesting group. I can't wait to see it. Now, our main event is the MLW Women's Featherweight Championship. We have Lady Flamer and Tail Valkyrie. I thought the match was really interesting. Because these two ladies, they know each other. But, however, Flamer hates her due to the fact that she felt that she invaded her home country a long time ago. But, as you know... Valkyrie has been one of the most dominating women's in Mexico until she applied the hall, uh, the road to Valhalla, and that is it. The real question does remain, who will be the next challenger? Who knows? But I think that's it for now with MLW, so let's end it with our final review, Impact Wrestling. Okay. Our final review, Impact Wrestling. It opened up with the Knockouts World Tag Team Championship. We have the challengers, Diana Perrazzo and Chelsea Green. I mean, Giselle Shaw. As you know, Giselle Shaw last week reminded Diana Perrazzo she does have an opportunity to regain those tag titles when she had with Chelsea Green. As you know, I mentioned <coughs> that Chelsea Green could be returning back to WWE, but that is yet to be seen until it happens. But they... Decide to face against the Death Dolls. But Tail Valkyrie made a very valid point a week ago saying they never specified who of the Death Dolls should be facing for those tag titles. So they played the old trick in the book, which is the free bird rule. Now, if you guys aren't familiarized with the free bir bird rule, let me explain. A faction known as the Free Birds were the tag champions. It was comprised of three or four members. Now, you can use whatever combination to defend those titles no matter what. It's been done before on various occasions. Even Bullet Club did the same thing once before. But <coughs> it's always played out that way. But 
you probably would have thought that somehow that Giselle Shaw and Diana Praza would win, would not win, would win because there were still some unresolved problems between both Je uh, Jessica and, of course, Rosemary. But this time it did not. It was a spear by Rosemary that put away Giselle Shaw. But at the same time, Jessica picked up the pinfall. But <coughs> later on, both Shaw and Praza were not happy. So they decided to go their separate ways. But I think we're going to see a bit of a rivalry between those two somewhere down the line. Now, joining Grace and Mickey James, as you know, they are opponents at Hard to Kill. But right now, they need to focus on the task in hand at their main event, where they take on against um, Tasha Steeles and Seven Evans. Now, this particular match was ha was assigned was booked last week due to the fact that Tasha Steeles feel that this whole thing is a sham <coughs> because she felt. She was the one who should have been sent home. But no, it was Chelsea Green who did that. But Tasha Steele wants to take credit for something that she thinks she caused. Now, <coughs> now, our next interesting segment promo we saw. Sammy Callahan comes out, calls out the design. However, Sammy, as you know, he's not afraid of the numbers. But however, it appears he had something in mind. He wanted to join the design. It's like, what? But he played this little, not mind game, but more like a reminder. The only reason Diener ended up being the leader was because it was Sammy who defeated him. <laughs> so basically it's like, I own you one, but it appears they are not interested. So they beat him down this time to send a clear message. Now, as you know, Josh Alexander is still dealing for what Bully Ray has caused, you know, putting his wife in arms Ray and Dreamer tried to find peace with him. But deep down, Josh Alexander doesn't even trust him due to the fact that, you know, he still thinks he's aligned with them. But he told him that he wants to do things on his own. But we'll get to that moment until then. Now, our next match, we have Mike Bailey versus Yuya Umura from New Japan Pro Wrestling. The match was pretty good. I loved it. <coughs> it was so awesome, but it was Mike Bailey with Ultima Weapon that picked up the win. But once again, right in the post match, Kenny King sends a direct message saying that he's in Mexico, feeling that his talent was not appreciated. Now, we know that Kenny King has been trying to get under the skin of Mike Bailey, so we just don't know if this was what triggered it. I don't know. But we'll just wait and see. Now, as you know, we have brand new tag team champions. The Motor City Machine Guns. Double champions or champ champs as the technical term in Impact is called. However, the major players are trying to find a way to get themselves back in the tag team title contingency. But however, Heath and Rhino do have a rematch clause. They can cash in. However, when the door was open... Is the Morse Machine Guns informing them there's going to be a four-way match featuring not only themselves but also the major players, Heath and Rhino and the Bullet Club. But however, it seems that he, uh, um, Cardona was not happy with this idea, but Saban decided you know to have a warm-up match with them next week. So I thought it was really fun. Funny how things were played out, but yeah. Now. We were supposed to have a tag match with John Schuyler and jo Jason Hodge, who met, uh, who decided to align themselves last week. Bullet Ray shows up and attacked them to send a clear message. He even zip tied Jason Hodge to the rope, ri the ring ropes, calling out Josh Alexander. And Alexander showed up, 
for the save, but it turned out it was a trap by Bully Ray. The hurt uh, Josh Alexander, but Tommy Dreamer showed up to try to help Josh Alexander. But however, the tables would turn when Bully Ray decided to toss him a ch chair uh, ladders, then whack him with the chair, putting him down completely. Even Josh Alexander felt helpless that he couldn't save him. But now he feels guilty for being harsh on him, knowing that maybe he wasn't the problem. But he did explain this to Demore that he wants his hard to kill match with him to be a, how to say, um, what he calls it, full metal mayhem match. Basically, is their version of TLC, which is going to be awesome. So this is an, a side of Alexander he needs to put out in order to put away Bully Ray. So even Demore tells him he needs to do this. But at the time being before hard to kill, he gave the order for for um, both Bully and Josh Alexander to be home to prepare for themselves because Josh Alexander needs to focus how to get to be that guy that he hasn't been yet. So that's going to be fun. Now, our next match, it was Steve Macklin versus Rich Swan. As you know, Macklin has been on a world of trying to say he earned an opportunity of the Impact Wrestling World Championship. He felt that there were people that have been cutting the line. So he's been trying to do the same thing. So he has to go through Rich Swan, a former champion. But match went into a no disqualification in a no contest, I believe, because um, things went out of control outside the ring. And of course, Macklin put his hands on the ref. You know the rules of that, but things went out of their way. But yeah. Now our final match, we our main event is Tasha Steeles and Savannah Evans taking on Mickey James and Jordan Grace. Now, Steeles and Savannah were able to isolate Mickey James away from Grace, but however, it didn't stay that long. But it was a muscle buster by Jordan Grace to, to Tasha Steeles to pick up the win. But however, <coughs> this thing between Jordan Grace and Mickey James looks more it's gonna explode even further than we possibly could imagine. So we'll just wait and see when we get to Hard to Kill. And I think that's pretty much it what we have for this particular segment. So let's move on with our final thing, news updates. <laughs> Okay, for our news updates, for all you stardom fans out there, you may have heard the news. Double Frontier, the themed entrance by Meltier, our tag team champions, is already out. So, if you guys haven't heard it, please check it out. I think it was a pretty good catchy song. I love how the um, they use the videos of their rivalry to become what they are now. Amazing. I love a good story with them. Now... Updates on Adam Cole. As you know, Adam Cole has been out of action since Forbidden Door. Uh, had a huge concussion that is so severe. However, Meltzer reports that, you know, AEW are taking precautions on him. There is still no timetable when, when he'll be back. We know we want to see him back be 100%. Um, we know that people have talked about there is a possibility he could retire. We don't know anything yet. But... Let's just hope for the best when he gets when he gets better. Now, as you know, speaking of AEW, <laughs> this past Wednesday, AEW was in San Antonio. They had a surprise visit from the former AEW Women's Champion Thunder Rosa since we since AEW was in San Antonio, her hometown. Now she's not expected to return to the ring until either February or March of 2023. I'm looking forward to her return. I do have that distinct feeling that she may have to challenge for the AEW Women's Championship. Now, keep in mind, Jamie Hayter has not beaten Thunder Rosa. So, <coughs> that's going to be a good story to tell. Now, two developments from Hardcore Hustle Organization. For their upcoming event on the 26th, uh, Torn to Shreds, there's going to be a match for the, for the H2O Tag Team titles. The double... 
a, a hell double double uh, bull rope match. We're going to have the current champions, Christian Ross and Chris Bailey, Bradley, taking on the Red Dead Redemption, One Commanders, and Ryan Redfield. So that's going to be interesting to see. Now, relation to H2O, their upcoming event on the 22nd, Hustle and Gold, there's going to be a three-way dance Southern Violence match. There's going to be Declan Grant versus John Wayne Murdoch versus Jimmy Chonto Lion. And of course, we're going to have two champions collide. The DHH champion, Brandon Kirk, and the DPW champion, um, One Call Mander. So that's going to be interesting to see. Now for our GCW updates, um, on the 56 nights, on the 1st of Jan of January, we're going to have the Do or Die Scramble. Uh, names have been announced involving that match. Joey Janela, Blake Christian, Tony Deppin, Willie Mack, Alec Price, and Jordan Oliver. So I thought this is going to be interesting. Now for our final update, we have the DPW Live that's taking place on the 14th of November. We have um, a four-way, a three-way match. We got Oliver Sawyer, Jay Malachi, and um, a Yoya, and of course, Bojack will be involved. Then the three-way, we have Noah Hossman, J.D. Drake, and Eric Loyal. Then we have Queen Aminata and Jade Stone. Then LeBron Canoes and uh, Jaden Newman will be will be there so i think this is going to be interesting uh, hopefully i get to see this event so uh we'll just gotta wait and see so right now let's just call it a day well i hope everybody enjoys this episode coming up we got more on new japan pro wrestling with road the tokyo dome which i'm excited to get there then we have aew rampage and nxt level up so it's going to be a lot of fun to watch now however i haven't seen Day four of the Stardom year-round tour event. Uh, there's still many events I haven't seen yet, but I'll get to those as soon as possible. But for now, I'll see you guys in the next DWZ time. Same DWZ channel. I must bid all of you adieu. So, goodbye. Mwah. And have a nice day. Bang.